Hello, I'm Eric Waite, and I'm going to talk to you about image filtering with CUDA. In the lab I work at, we work with cell and tissue image analysis. What we want to do is take a movie that from the biologists and find all the cells and objects that they're interested in. In this, these particular movies, we're looking at stem cells and trying to find the lineage gene of each cell to figure out disease uh, propagation or other type of drug testing. So what I'll talk to you about today is uh, give you a little bit of motivation that we do it in our lab. I'll give you a, a bit more background as far as uh, images themselves and the biology behind it. I'll give you a little bit of theory of filtering images, how I implemented it using CUDA, uh, some of the results I found, and what conclusions I've drawn from that. So why, why do we want to filter an image in the first place? Well, with biologists, we have these multi-million dollar microscopes that they keep getting better and better. The sensors keep getting more sensitive Yet, if you give a biologist a very sensitive sensor, they just look in a darker place. And you end up with noisy images anyways because they're looking uh, even farther than they could before. And with filtering, we can actually find structures in an image. So we don't just have images for images sake. We can actually pull out using the computer and find um, objects within the images. However, there, these filtering techniques could be used on your personal everyday uh, images, maybe for noise reduction or um, try to smooth out an image or, or the like. In our lab, we work with different image modalities. One uh, typical one is the phase contrast image, which gives you a very dark center to a cell and then you get this halo around it. Uh, sometimes when the biologists overexpose their images, you get what you see in the hematopoietic here where you actually have a bright center um, and you still have a halo, but you don't get quite the gradient that you would in a properly exposed. Uh, also during mitosis or when a cell splits, you might get the same uh, look to a cell. We also have uh, fluorescent images where they do multi-photon microscopy and the sensors are trying to capture uh, single photons uh, at a time so you can imagine how much noise you make get in something like that. Segmentation is a crucial part of the whole process uh, and possibly one of the most important because it starts everything off. If you have bad segmentation, you'll probably have bad results at the end. So what we usually do is we try to get rid of any artifacts that may have been introduced into the images, such as noise. Once we get rid of that, we try to color the image in what pixels are part of objects we want and which pixels are not. So we get this nice binary image here where we get white objects and black background. And to get that, we usually use an Atsu filter where it takes a histogram to generate a threshold and then we mark every pixel as white if you're above a threshold and black if you're below it. And then once we get that we use some morphological operations where we can get rid of things like the hole in the cell down here. We can close that up or we can try to split things up. Say this, uh, this blob over here there's probably three or four cells. In phase contrast images we also have the problem of the interior of a cell sometimes looks very similar to the exterior of the cell. So you have to use some kind of gradient information where you look across this border to find the cell. You might think that it should be fairly trivial to find objects within an image. Uh, you can look at this image uh, and find it fairly simple without any knowledge of what structures you're looking for or whatnot. Um, however, the computer is only looking at one value at any given time. So you can see this blown up portion of a, a neighborhood 
of the original image. So what we have to do is give the computer a, a bit more context. So we use neighborhood operators to figure out what a pixel value should actually be, just in case there was some uh, imaging problems. So to determine a particular pixel's value, what we do is look at its neighborhood. However, your neighbors might not necessarily determine your fate uh, equally. The neighbor neighbors closest to you and yourself is probably uh, more likely what you're going to be, where as you go farther away, those neighbors don't have as much effect on you. So we can use kernels such as this Gaussian that you see here that drops off from the center. Uh, you can also use some kind of mask, so if you're looking at uh, certain shapes. You can use a circle mask or a triangle mask or say a line mask where zeros would be where you you don't really care about those values and you only care about the ones with say ones on them. So what I did is I used CUDA to try to implement some of these filters. I used a pipeline approach so I could string filters together and minimize moving data off the card and back on the card. I tried to make as many threads as I could uh, so the scheduler could run it as quickly as possible. And like I said, I tried to keep the, the image around on the card as much as possible. And then when I have multiple GPUs, I use OpenMP to make sure I can utilize all of them. So first I try to figure out how many threads and blocks I need. I try to get as many threads as possible, so I, I query the device and get the max threads per block. And then uh, once I have those, once I have that dimension, then I figure out how many blocks I would need to actually cover the full image. And then I call uh, a given filter. So this one's a minimum filter, which just takes the minimum of your neighborhood um, using those blocks and threads. Uh, I try to have a device in and device out of each filter which should stay on the on the device as long as possible and then uh, an arbitrary kernel so you can mask out or use different size um, weighting of your neighbors here's an example of a filter uh, this one in particular is a minimum filter where I, we take the minimum of your neighborhood uh, first, I need to figure out where you are in the image space by calculating X and Y. And then once we have X and Y, we make sure you're within the original image. Uh, I've taken the original image and added a padding onto it, so my kernel, when it goes off the edge of the image, has something to still calculate. Once we have that information, we go over the the size of the kernel, and we figure out what is your min value and we disregard anybody that we set as a zero in our in our kernel that we're running out. Uh, if you're not in the or the original image size, we'll just set you back to what it was in the uh, the padded image. The whole point of this experiment was not just to do this as a final, but I currently use a toolkit called ITK Image Toolkit, which has a bunch of these image filters built right in. Uh, however, they seem kind of inefficient. Some filters are multi-threaded, but even the ones that are multi-threaded don't seem to use up the processor like I would hope. I have used OpenMP to run multiple images at once through ITK, uh, and that does help with some speed up. So I wanted to try my hand in CUDA. Uh, I also used OpenMP and CUDA together so I could get as many cards as I have possible going with images. Um, another benefit using CUDA is I can uh, do other stuff on the CPU while the GPU is working on segmentation. So once the segmentation comes back I could display the image or uh, do something else. So I used two different computers as my testing environment. I had my home computer which has an AMD with six cores on it, and then it also contains two GTX 560 graphics cards. Uh, the GTX 560 has a pretty fast clock rate, almost at two gigahertz. Um, one gig of memory, which is okay for what I'm doing. 
uh, and then it has 336 CUDA cores. And then I also had a lab computer which contains two Xeon chips with eight physical cores on each, uh, which are also hyper-threaded, so you get a total of 32 logical cores. And then it has dual 680s. Uh, the 680s have a much slower clock rate, but it has four times the memory and uh, about five times the cores. And what I actually used for my tests was uh, 2,700 images, which were about 1024 by 1024 uh, phase contrast images. And then what I wanted to do is try uh, a pipeline in ITK and CUDA that did a mean filter, so it found the average of your neighborhood. Use Atsu Threshold, which uh, utilizes a histogram to find a threshold. Uh, and then I wanted to erode and dilate, which means I take a minimum of your neighborhood and then a maximum of your neighborhood to try to separate cells. So here are my results. If you run ITK in a single thread, it takes on average 0.3 seconds a frame. So the job took about 860 seconds. Now if you use OpenMP, you can get a speed up. On my home computer, using six threads, I was able to get it down to 0.08 seconds a frame, which is uh, about uh, roughly four, a speed up of four. Now with 16 threads on the lab computer, I use 16 instead of 32 because I found that you should use uh, physical core count, not the logical core count for cache uh, misses. Uh, I was able to get it all the way down to 0.02 seconds a frame, which is uh, roughly 15 speed up, which is pretty close to linear speed up. Uh, you also notice here that the the actual frames per second uh, is linear uh, at 0.47 seconds. So the more threads you can throw at it, the faster this w this should go. The CUDA on the 560, I was able to get it down to 0 0.047 seconds per frame, which is about a 6 speed up. Uh, however, the 680 was a bit confusing, which was only down to a 0 0.08 seconds, which we're back at uh, 4 speed up. Um, and this could be because the 680 has a uh, different memory model and many more uh, threads per block. So there might be some optimization to be had uh, trying to figure out the calculations of how many threads in the block uh, uh, to make it go as fast as possible. Also with CUDA you've got a bunch of overhead of moving the memory from the host memory onto the card and back. And here you can see an example of what I was getting from my filters. So in conclusion, ITK takes about constant time per image per thread and scares, scales quite linearly per CPU. Uh, however, CPUs are quite expensive. The Xeon processors and uh, the computers that I'm using are about $2,000 per chip. So for $4,000 we were able to get a linear speed up of 15. Uh, with the CUDA, we do each frame quite fast uh, compared to ITK, uh, but there is some overhead associated with that. So if we could do much more filtering um, on the card without moving it back and forth, uh, the pipeline I was using is fairly small, so maybe there's something to be had uh, with some more filters. Uh, but we were able to get a uh, six speed up on a very cheap GPU. Uh, you can pick up one of those for about 250 bucks, 300 bucks. Um, however, it did seem like there might be a drawback of needing to optimize the code per device. So going forward, I'd like to make uh, more filters so I can make my pipeline much bigger and do some more interesting things on the card. And hopefully that making the pipeline bigger 
will allow the movement of memory to be mitigated. I'd also like to test out some opera optimization per card. Possibly I can do some asynchronous moving of images onto the card and processing, or maybe doing multiple images per GPU at a time. Uh, but it does seem like the cards are starved for data. They run through it, and the card is only at about 20% capacity. Uh, another nice thing with CUDA is I can use the CPU to do other things. So as the as I allow the GPU to process the images in this lower level segmentation, I can use the CPU to do higher level uh, uh, data gathering, such as tracking, creating the, image, the lineages, or measuring the cell's size, or whatever. Uh, and also, GPUs are about a quarter of the price of the Xeon CPU. So if we're going to put this uh, image processing software in the hands of biologists, uh, we can get them GPUs much cheaper than trying to buy them huge supercomputers. So thank you. Uh, questions are welcome. I'd like to thank Chris Bjornsson at the Neural Stem Cell Institute for providing me images to do my tests on. So I will talk to you again soon.